I'm Dr. Stephanie Ruth Wilson. I'm a physician in Canada and uh, I practice ultrasound and have a very special practice focused on contrast enhanced ultrasound studies predominantly of the liver but also of inflammatory bowel disease. I'm a professor of radiology and gastroenterology at the University of Calgary. The talk that I'm going to um, share with you today is an unusual presentation which I hope you will find educational and enjoyable and it's part of a case-based interactive session at RSNA 2013 in which I speak in a quiz format about the benefits of contrast enhanced ultrasound for liver mass evaluation. Today we're going to speak about contrast enhanced ultrasound of focal liver lesions. I'd like to make the disclosure that the contrast agent used Definity is off-label for use in the United States, although it is an on-label use in Canada where I live. So the objectives of this presentation are to show the fundamental principles of contrast enhanced ultrasound interpretation with regards to enhancement patterns and vascular morphology. And this will be presented in an interactive quiz format with case presentations. So contrast enhanced ultrasound of liver masses is the most successful pursuit for contrast enhanced ultrasound. And this can be judged in terms of the number of published papers and the ongoing clinical work and research endeavors. And so basically when we consider characterize the con contrast enhanced ultrasound of liver masses, there are two questions which we can pose. The first is related to liver characterization or asking ourselves, what is it? And the second is related to liver mass detection or asking ourselves the question, is it there? So the first pursuit that we undertook when we started to use microbubble contrast agents was the development of an algorithm for the diagnosis of liver masses on CEUS. And so this is similar to those for the non-invasive diagnosis of liver masses on CT and MR scan, not surprisingly. So these, of course, are based on the enhancement characteristics in the arterial phase and the portal venous phase. However, contrast-enhanced ultrasound has the added advantage of temporal resolution and also exquisite vessel morphology. So the first question which I'll pose relates to washout. So washout of a liver lesion in the portal venous phase is highly predictive of which of the following? A malignant tumor, a benign tumor, a lesion of hepatocyte origin, a lesion of non-hepatocyte origin, or a liver abscess. So considering these five possibilities, which one should you always think of when you see washout of a liver lesion on CEUS? Well, the answer is a malignant tumor. So malignant tumors have a high association with washout. And so in the early work that we did, we found that this benefit of portal venous phase enhancement was really very significant in terms of characterization of mass lesions in that washout has a very high positive predictive value of malignancy and sustained enhancement alternately has a high positive predictive value of benignancy. So if we look at this portion of a schematic which we've created to show the imaging features of benign masses and metastases, you can see if we look at the column, the third column, the portal venous phase imaging, that the three benign tumors listed at the top have a strong tendency to still show enhancement in the portal venous phase, whereas the metastases comprising the group at the bottom of the schematic, although they can have variable imaging in the arterial phase, they have a constant period appearance in the portal venous phase where they're shown on the schematic as black or having shown complete washout. So let's look at that in another way. So here's a 27-year-old male with hepatitis B virus. If we look at the peak of arterial phase enhancement on a contrast-enhanced CT scan and a contrast-enhanced ultrasound, we can see a concordant image with a non-homogeneous hypervascularity of the mass with a low attenuation area centrally. If we look in the portal venous phase, however, on both imaging, again, we see a concordant result with washout of the mass. So what does this mean? It means that we should be suspicious. This is a malignant mass. 
um, and the washout in the portal venous phase is what is telling in this regard, and this is a biopsy-proven hepatocellular carcinoma. So contrast this with another young, asymptomatic woman. We inject the contrast, and at the peak of the arterial phase, we see a homogeneous hypervascular mass on both the CT and the ultrasound. In the portal venous phase, we show sustained enhancement on both images with a non-enhancing scar. And this, of course, suggests a benign mass on the basis of this sustained enhancement, and this is a proven focal nodular hyperplasia. So let's have another question. A 60-year-old woman with a remote history of breast cancer. She presents to the emergency department with a right-sided abdominal pain. She had a non-enhanced CT scan on the basis of a suspicion of a renal stone. And although she did not have a renal stone, she was found to have an indeterminate mass in her liver. After considerable further um, imaging, she was referred for ultrasound. So on her ultrasound, we can see this echogenic mass deep in her liver, far too deep to perform contrast-enhanced ultrasound. But in the left lateral decubitus position from an intercostal approach, we can bring the mass much closer to the transducer crystal, and it is in this position that we do the contrast-enhanced ultrasound shown here. So when we inject the contrast, you can see the mass is immediately hypervascular even before the liver has enhanced. However, as the liver progressively enhances, you can see that the mass is no longer enhanced and has now become black. So if we look, we can see the mass on baseline in the arterial phase at 11 seconds showing homogeneous hypervascularity and by 22 seconds it has rapidly washed out. So when we see this appearance with washout in less than 30 seconds, what is the question that we'll pose? So the enhancement characteristics of this tumor suggest that we should recommend which of the following? A triphasic CT scan, a contrast-enhanced MRI, a biopsy, a mammogram, or a colonoscopy. So obviously, if you consider these possibilities, the triphasic CT scan and the contrast-enhanced MRI will both confirm the mass lesion in the liver, but they will not give us additional information. We could do a biopsy to get the answer, or we could perform a mammogram if we were suspicious of breast cancer, or a colonoscopy if we might be suspicious of a tumor of GI origin. So the answer here, of course, is that the CT and MR won't give additional information. The mammogram and colonoscopy might give an answer, but not likely. And what we have to do is a biopsy. So the correct answer when we see this rapid washout is a biopsy of the tumor. And so when we have this kind of tumor, hypervascular with that washout, we do the biopsy, and this is a metastatic carcinoid tumor. We show also on that ultrasound a small bowel primary tumor shown here as a hypovascular mass arising from the bowel wall. So what have we shown so far in the cases we've looked at? We have established that washout is predictive of malignancy. So the next question relates to the timing of washout. So the timing of washout of a liver lesion helps to differentiate A, a sarcoma from hemangioendothelioma, a peripheral cholangiocarcinoma from a metastasis, a hypervascular from a hypovascular metastasis, or a non-hepatocyte tumor from hepatocellular carcinoma. So what does the timing of washout actually help us with? Well, it helps us with the differentiation of non-hepatocyte from hepatocyte-based tumors, or essentially what we're considering is metastatic disease or cholangiocarcinoma from HCC. So this timing of washout exquisitely well shown on CEUS is very, very valuable for this most important differentiation. So when we consider malignant liver tumors, we know that timing of washout is discriminatory. And in a study performed in my laboratory in Toronto some years ago, we noted that metastases wash out very fast, often within the time frame of the arterial phase, and they tend to wash out completely. And so if we come back to our schematic, we can see that in the arterial phase, shown in the box at the bottom of the page, these lesions can have variable morphology. 
They can show hypervascularity, they can show rim enhancement, or they may show hypovascularity. But regardless of their appearance in the arterial phase, in the portal venous phase, they show rapid and complete washout. So if we look at three different patients with malignant tumors, we can see a rim enhancement pattern, we can see diffuse hypervascularity, or we can show diffuse hypovascularity. Regardless, all of these tumors, here we can see two hypoechoic masses on the baseline scan, and when we do the CEUS, again, the masses have transient hypervascularity, and then before our eyes, these tumors wash out as the liver begins to enhance. So those are metastatic tumors. So let's look at the other side of this coin. Here's an asymptomatic 68-year-old female with an unremarkable liver apart from a large mass lesion in the posterior aspect of the liver shown in sagittal and axial plane. So when we perform contrast-enhanced ultrasound, we can see that this mass is hypervascular immediately prior to the enhancement of the adjacent liver. So at 18 seconds, the mass is hypervascular. However, as we watch the mass, we can see that the mass is now at 25 seconds beginning to wash out. And by 29 seconds, the mass, in fact, appears black within the enhanced parenchyma. So if we look at still images taken from the clip, we show the mass at 14 seconds is hypervascular, but by 37 seconds, the mass has washed out again, rapid washout in less than one minute. And by three minutes, you can see that the mass is completely black. So we know that our differential diagnosis includes metastasis or cholangiocarcinoma. This is not hepatocellular carcinoma, and it's not a benign tumor. So this is a biopsy-proven cholangiocarcinoma. So this rapid washout in one minute or less, what should we think of? We should think of metastatic disease, and we should think of cholangiocarcinoma. Although it may rarely be hepatocellular carcinoma, this kind of rapid washout is much less likely for this diagnosis. So let's go on now and talk about hepatocellular carcinoma. So the classic enhancement pattern for HCC is that of arterial phase hypervascularity with portal venous phase washout, which is often slow and weak. Now, we know also that there are many va variations, including in the arterial phase, iso or hypovascularity, and in the portal venous phase, slow or no washout. Consequently, our schematic for hepatocellular carcinoma is quite elaborate as shown here. However, if we concentrate on the issue that we're dealing with, we can see that the portal venous phase variations include hypervascularity in the arterial phase with no washout on the top line or delayed washout on the bottom. So let's look at such an example. Here's a 73-year-old man from Hong Kong who's hepatitis B virus surface antigen positive. So when we look at him, we see a very nice liver without any stigma of cirrhosis. However, you can see nicely within the center of the liver a well-defined mass. When we inject contrast, we can see easily that this is a hypervascular mass. So we are thinking of hepatocellular carcinoma when we see this hypervascularity. Now, when we look at the mass at the peak of the arterial phase, we show the homogeneous hypervascularity. When we look at one minute, the mass is still hypervascular relative to the liver. When we look at two minutes, the mass is isovascular. It does not show rapid washout. However, at three minutes, we show rather weak washout. This is classic hepatocellular carcinoma. Let's look at another patient, an indeterminate mass in a patient without documented risk. So we don't know what this is. It could be many diagnoses. And so we do an immediate contrast-enhanced ultrasound at the time of its detection, and we show again a homogeneous hypervascular mass. So then when we observe the mass at one minute, we no longer see the mass. It's isovascular. At one minute, 30 seconds, the mass remains isovascular. So what does this mean? Could this still be a malignant tumor? Yes, it could indeed be a malignant tumor. So what should we do? We should watch for a longer time. And with the contrast agent that I use, Definity, this is five minutes minimum for sure. 
So when we look at three minutes and 50 seconds, I'm sure you'll agree with me, there's a vague suggestion of washout. When we continue observing to four minutes, 30 seconds, you can see that the mass has definitely washed out. So there's our um, summation um, arterial phase hypervascularity, weak washout at four minutes, again, classic hepatocellular carcinoma, and totally different from the enhancement patterns that we observed for metastases and cholangiocarcinoma. So coming back to our question, the timing of washout of a liver lesion helps to differentiate, very importantly, non-hepatocyte tumors from hepatocellular carcinoma. So let's look now at a 59-year-old woman with a recently diagnosed brain tumor. She has an unexpected liver mass on portal venous phase CT scan, which is quite indeterminate, sticks out of the liver, has a heterogeneous appearance, and is of uncertain diagnosis. When we look at this patient on baseline ultrasound, we can see this unusual, somewhat echogenic mass lesion, again, quite indeterminate on the ultrasound scan. When we add color Doppler, we can see substantial blood flow, which might make us suspicious, but again, it doesn't tell us the answer. However, when we inject contrast on CEUS, we can see a quite different pattern that we've seen with the other tumors. And so here we look at this clip for some time at 15, 16 seconds. The mass is enhancing some, somewhat more. And when we look at the clips, um, the images taken from the clip, you can see these series of images right up until the patient has complete enhancement of this mass. So the next question is, the enhancement characteristics of this mass suggest what diagnosis? An incidental hemangioma, a focal nodular hyperplasia, hepatocellular carcinoma, a metastasis, or an adenoma? And so here, I'm sure you've got this answer, incidental hemangioma. And this is, of course, characterized by peripheral nodules of enhancement with centripetal progression and sustained enhancement. And it doesn't have the linear vessels that we see with the HCC and metastatic lesions. So no further investigation is required for this mass. So when we look at hemangiomas on ultrasound, they tend to have an appearance such as this, where early on they're often quite hypovascular. Then they start to show the peripheral nodules as shown in the middle image and ultimately more complete um, enhancement, which may not be uniform as here, where portions of the tumor remain unenhanced. So what about this patient, an oncology patient with an unexpected liver mass um, on CT scan, shown on ultrasound adjacent to the diaphragm? And here, um, on three images from CEUS, we can see again peripheral nodular enhancement with centripetal progression of the enhancement. So when we look at the clip, you can see in this clip, which is looping, that the mass enhances very rapidly. So this is a rapidly perfused hemangioma with the peripheral nodules and centripetal progression. So let's go on to our last topic that we'll cover today, and that's MIP imaging. So with MIP imaging, we track the course of the bubbles between successive frames, and it provides for us a huge advantage in the arterial phase. So because of the temporal resolution, we can see vessel morphology. So here you can see on the top right image that we're looking at a normal liver with beautiful arborization of the vessels. And on the bottom left, we're looking at a patient with cirrhosis with marked truncation and tortuosity of these abnormal vessels. And so only on ultrasound can we see this exquisite resolution where here in a patient with a hemangioma, we can see the normal vasculature with um, resolution up to the six order branches um, of the liver vasculature. So this maximum intensity projection or MIP imaging contributes most to the differentiation of which tumors? Metastases from hepatocellular carcinoma, adenoma from hepatocellular carcinoma, F and H from adenoma, or peripheral cholangiocarcinoma from metastatic tumor. Well, we know that metastases and hepatocellular carcinoma are differentiated by the rate of their portal venous phase washout. Adenoma and hepatocellular carcinoma are differentiated on the basis of patient history more than anything else. And when we consider peripheral cholangiocarcinoma from metastatic tumors, 
they are virtually identical and are differentiated predominantly on history again. And so where does MIP contribute? It contributes hugely to the differentiation of FNH from adenoma. So let's look at the clinical situation in which this occurs. So the frequent dilemma occurs when we have a young asymptomatic female with a hypervascular mass on CT scan, and we pose to ourselves the question, is it FNH or is it adenoma? So contrast-enhanced ultrasound shows vessel morphology and direction of filling. And so let's look here at a patient with a classic FNH. So you can see the kidney at the back of the image, and you can see with the MIP imaging that the lesion fills, and then when we destroy the bubbles with a brief burst of high MI, the tumor refills, showing the stellate vessels and the centrifugal filling from the center to the periphery of the tumor. Now, although we can often see this stellate vasculature on color Doppler, this has never been proven to be reliable as an accurate method of diagnosing FNH. Whereas contrast enhanced ultrasound with its classic um, appearance on MIP imaging is recognized to be um, a confident method for um, this benign diagnosis. So contrast this with another patient, also a young asymptomatic female, and you can see this patient with adenoma has got instead um, filling from the periphery of the tumor with very dysmorphic vessels, classic for a liver cell adenoma, and another patient with glycogen storage disease, a superficial tumor showing again the filling of the tumor from the periphery to its center. So the last questions that I will ask or just review is um, that this question of maximum intensity projection, it contributes most to the differentiation of FNH from adenoma. So that is the conclusion of the presentation. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope that this was a good learning lesson about liver tumors with contrast-enhanced ultrasound.